were very lucky to get a, a grant from the Australian Sports Commission through the AIS um, to bring a number of internationally renowned coaches or experts across to Australia. Um, Antonio is the is the second of three uh, that we're bringing. So some of you might have seen Derek Evely talk about throwing and planning. Um, I asked around in, um, in the walks community who would be a good walks guy to bring, ac bring across. And independently, three different people mentioned Antonio's name. Uh, so I did some research and it turns out he's a professor of physiology. He's very well known in the uh, running world as well as the walking world. Um, so a huge network of people across uh, Europe, into Kenya, China, uh, all sorts of people that he, that he uh, deals with or he's taught or worked with him or for him over the years. So we're very lucky to uh, have him across here. And today he's going to um, talk split in two parts. First part will be about physiology, basics uh, of physiology, and then in Antonio's mind how that applies to running and what he's seen around the world and through history and with the athletes he works with and how that will go fit together. And then tomorrow, the ones that are here tomorrow as well, uh, another layer of physiology on top of that, next layer up there, with more of a bent towards walks, and then right on the cutting edge of walking, training, coaching, sports science, and how that's, how that's working. So that's how the two days were laid together. So I'll hand over to Antonio. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks to Simon and Australian Institute of Sport to invite me. It's a great honor for me to return in Australia after the Olympic Games in 2000. I'm very happy for my friend Nathan Dix, I know from many, many years. He arrived in Sydney in the place and my place to stay, Alessandro Gandini is my athlete. You have parents in Italy, they have a very good relation. My English is not perfect. In my presentation, they have a, a the first part for better understand the physiology mechanism. Uh, we have basis on the endurance performance, and after uh, it's important for me to know the evolution of training methods. I prefer to read the, the notes uh, dia by dia, and uh, after we discuss. Okay, good. Look, we will have access to this presentation as well afterwards, so take notes, feel free, but you'll have the yeah. presentation as well. All the material I send to Simon and Kylie are at a disposition for you. And uh, activities distinguished between uh, those which demand short-term endurance, medium-term endurance, and long-term endurance. Short-term endurance activities last between 25 seconds and two minutes. And uh, mainly local energy stores are used ATP at first for creating. Medium-term endurance exercise last between two and 10 minutes and require at the energy of, for this activity come from glycolytic metabolism. This approach is important because there are many, many consequences on the choice of methods and means of training. Okay? Also, oxidative uh, metabolism plays an increased important role with increasing time of exercise. Long-term endurance activities last more 10 minutes and uh, mainly use aerobic metabolism. All free energy systems have a role in these activities with different prevalence depending on the time and intensity of exercise. This is why we say interrelationship of the various areas of endurance. These areas of endurance are not watertight compartment independent of each other. overall schematics of the multiple physiological uh, factors that interest the determinant of performance in endurance 
and uh, regarding the velocity and power output. Per performance can be potentially limited by aerobic characteristics and VO2 max and the speed and the lactate threshold. And uh, uh, there are different factors, the maximum oxygen consumption uh, are influenced for muscle capillary density, stroke volume, maximal heart beat, heart rate, and the contents of hemoglobin in the, in the body of athletes. And uh, the performance on the endurance are very conditioning by this factor. We analyze factor by factors and uh, the relation with the, the training. It's important for uh, VO2 max, the uh, efficiency, the stroke volume are one of the best, pardon, the best uh, consequence because uh, the stroke volume is, are influenced by the training. Uh, VO, max VO2 uh, for the athletes, we, uh, we know in the five to eight minutes and uh, after the climb because by faulting the stroke volume and accelerate the muscle fatigue due to reduce blood uh, and oxygen delivery and increase the contribution of anaerobic metabolism. Uh, we have uh, frequently we have two athletes with the same VO2 max, but for different performance because have, for example, lactate threshold different because have, for example, efficiency uh, different because have uh, uptake of oxygen different, and that's very important to know this uh, this aspect. Of performance. Maximal oxygen uptake is traditionally defined as the maximum rate of which oxygen can be taken and used by the body during exercise. The pulmonary diffusing capacity is basically limited by the pulmonary ventilation and percentage of hemoglobin saturation, for example, when we stay in altitude training. Max cardiac output is limited by maximum heart rate, limited by age, by hormonal factor, and nervous control, and training status. O2 carrying capacity is limited by quantity of blood hemoglobin. It's different from men to woman, 40, 70 for men, 12, from 15 to woman. Capillary, capillary density, a strong relationship exists between the number of capillaries per fiber and VO2 max. And uh, the last point important, uh, the very objective of endurance training are installing the body of athletes numerous mitochondria. Mitochondria are very central of energy exchange for oxygen, and uh, the performance <coughs> and endurance depending from the number, the density, and the uh, limit of the mitochondria for the endurance uh, process energetics. In the first graph, we show that uh, the linear relationship between time for 10 mile run and oxygen uptake, and we can see a similar re relationship between marathon performance and peak oxygen uptake. It's not enough to uh, have a big VO2 max, example, uh, 75, 80 milliliter per minute per kilo, but the more more important are the uptake of oxygen and the peak of oxygen we use for the athletes. And the training, uh, it's important to understand these physiological mechanisms because are in the choice of the uh, training 
means are very important to clearly the objective of different training needs. Another example, the histogram shows the maximum oxygen consumption normalized for body max and male and female in the different sports. In the first column are shown the mean values for non-athletes. Endurance athletes show VO2 max value between 70 to 85 milliliter minutes per kilo. The woman values are slightly tower due to the lower concentration of hemoglobin. Uh, are not important to have uh, 85 pro kilo for one the Olympic Games. Ivano Brunetti during her career is oscillation of VO2 max from 72 to 74, but your grid capacity is a grid uptake. You use 98% of your VO2 max. That are the very uh, most important to know because if you have, uh, example, an exceptional uh, 90 milliliter by minutes per kilo, uh, you use 65 milliliter, uh, you are right after the, uh, the other athletes who have the motor uh, because the VO2 max is similarly uh, the motor of a, a car. Uh, but if you use a little percentage of <coughs> power, your uh, <coughs> performance decreases. Another example, the marathon is run approximately from 75 to 85 percent of VO2 max and uh, consumption. The 10K between 90 and 100% um, of VO2 max and uh, 5 km uh, substantially equal to the VO2 max. Mm. Now the Kenyan athletes, the African, uh, East African runners, example, uh, the world record in uh, mm, 5K from Kenanisa Bekele, 12 minutes and 39 seconds, are uh, approximately 99% of your 2 max. Are, uh, one example to maintain other the 10 minutes the uh, consumption and 100 for 100%. Uh, it's important to know the value of maximum oxygen consumption. Yes, do not help for uh, uh, predict the performance in elite athletes. While knowing the speed of the maximum oxygen consumption and time that can be maintained provide useful information to predict the performance and the training. The speed at VO2 max is the speed at which the athlete is able to maximal use of the aerobic metabolism. Time limit at velocity of VO2 max is the amount of the time that uh, velocity VO2 max can be sustained. Example, time limit is one of the tests using uh, in the Great Britain, also in uh, America, in laboratory for uh, define uh, the capacity to athletes to maintain at the high percentage your uh, ability to consumption of maximum oxygen. And uh, is not strictly related to the performance on track, but if you know you can manipulate the training at the various of intensity of training, very, very good, very better choice. Another important uh, time in the knowledge of uh, coaches uh, are many diffusing from 280 are the, mm, the lactate threshold uh, team. Uh, 
blood lactate levels are only a measure from lactate accumulation and non-lactate production because the ability and the, one of the objective of the training are increase the capacity to remove from, from the blood the lactate. One of the abilities of Kenyan athletes during the uh, continuous bearing of the velocity in the uh, competition are the ability during the training we increase the capacity to uh, muscle buffering of lactate remove the lactate and uh, use the lactate from another form another uh, full of energy in the past the lactate are similarly the wolf uh, is the enemy now now the the knowledge from uh, sports scientists we permit the lactate as another uh, support to the athletes during the competition if you use in the cycle of, of pyruvate you use the lactate uh, of energy another example uh, muscle and blood lactate accumulation during exercise mean that the mechanism of lactate disposal and the clearance have been exceeded. The overall system is failing with metabolic demand. What appears to be occurring is that the maximum rate of fat oxidation is inadequate to meet the ATP demand. F muscle contradicting at moderate and high intensity. In, in the second exposition, I return in the in problem of effect oxidation because during a marathon, that are one of the form of success in the body don't have the energy uh, enough energy to complete. Uh, from carbohydrate, <coughs> the total marathon distance. After one hour, uh, after 90 minutes, uh, I'll finish the reserve in the muscle, the fetus from uh, ATP. It's important in marathon, integrate the uh, consumption of uh, acid grass uh, combined by carbohydrate. And one of the ability of the top level athletes in the first part of marathon is increase the contribution from energy derived from uh, acid uh, from acid grass free and they use the carbohydrate in the second part of marathon we increase the intensity we increase the velocity etc and uh, this mm, this causes intracellular signaling event to occur which stimulate glycogenolysis and uh, glycolysis and ultimately the rate of pyruvate delivery to the mitochondrial progressively exceed the ability of the mitochondrial to oxidize pyruvate and this lead to accelerate generation of lactic acid. Maximum lactate in a steady state is defined as the highest workload that can be maintained over time where there is a balance between lactate production and lactate clearance. Lactate clearance uh, are many most influenced by training. After we discuss with the choice of uh, uh, training methods and training means we discuss what are the means we increase the capacity of athletes for buffering uh, lactate for clearance of lactate by definition maximum lactate in steady state is attained when lactate varies by less than a one millimole during the final 20 minutes of constant intensity exercise during the work effort and below the max less maximum lactate steady state workload, there is a balance between lactate production and its removal. 
but when the P4 is above the max lactating steady state workload, the rate of lactate production exceeds its rate of clearance. Normally, uh, it's very easy to confront higher uh, highest maximum lactate in steady state. We permit the sample to maintain high intensity for half marathon. Uh, the best top athletes in the half marathon we maintain maximum lactate in steady state around one hour. The lactate threshold concept is the SSI intensity at which lactate starts to accumulate in the blood. In untrained subject or in a medium level athlete, the rise in lactate concentration is seen at about 60% of VO2 max, while training, training subject can exercise at 75 to 85, also to 90% to VO2 uh, max, before we can see a marked increase in block lactate concentration, given the best ability to dispose of lactate the ability to oxidize lactate from muscle and other tissue, livery, cholecyto, or the membrane, makes the lactate threshold in elite endurance athlete occur, occur at high value compared to other subjects, trainer or sedentary. The ability of the best uh, athletes in uh, of elite athlete in, in endurance discipline are the constantly, constantly process to removal of lactate. In uh, another, uh, there are this um, table uh, um, which the high correlation between lactate threshold concept and uh, performance. Uh, uh, if you have higher lactate threshold, you are guaranteed a big performance, for example, in half and in marathon. And when we discuss the training uh, marathon, example, uh, it's are not important to have a big uh, lactate threshold example, 24 uh, k, uh, k by, by hour when the uh, intensity of marathon and 20 k. It's important in the training process of a marathon, we increase the anaerobic threshold. Uh, we have the concentration of two, uh, two by two millimole of lactate uh, corresponding at the intensity with the best uh, athletes we maintain during all the marathon. Example, if you have uh, an aerobic threshold at 20 k by hour, uh, anaerobic threshold 21 is a very good relationship in the marathon. Different are in the middle long distance. In 800 meter lactate threshold uh, are not important because the contribution of aerobic and anaerobic uh, process in 800 meter are 50% 50%. And example, at the end of the marathon, the best athletes have a concentration 2.3 for lactate, at the lactate. At the final, at the end of the competition, in 800 meters, if the best athlete, we have 22, 24 millimole uh, lactate uh, by liter. And uh, one minutes for discuss this idea because uh, I require your attention. We have identified that the free energy system which requires a surge of energy or fuel to bind ADP with P to resynthesize ATP, creating phosphate and glycogen. And 
uh, example, sugar and carbohydrate and fat are the three main sources of energy. However, there is a evidence that lactate, a big product of the anaerobic lactic system, is also a fuel for the resynthesis of ATP. In the past, it was viewed that the lactic energy system as being a purely anaerobic phenomenon with lactic acid playing the role a toxic product or waste product. Recent research has been carried of specifically aimed of determining the role of lactate. Lactate is not a metabolic dead end. There are several possible phases for lactates once formed. It may be metabolized in the muscle or it may enter in the systemic circulation. Lactate produced within a muscle may, may be oxidized for the production of ATP. Additional recent research suggests that with in high intensity exercise, protein is used in the process of energy. And from here, to determine the necessity of supply after the training uh, in the nutrition of protein in the diet of athletes. And lactate are another uh, contribution for uh, recent exercise, the ATP. And uh, continuous for the factor determine uh, the performance in endurance, uh, I mentioned previously one of the factors limiting the performance of the endurance is linked to the ability to buffer hydro, hydrogen ions and to prevent the decrease in pH adversely affect the performance. Example, one of the objectives of the training are increase the enzyme activity for increase the capacity of the athlete to buffering the lactate for buffering uh, hydrogen ion. During uh, the marathon running, uh, relative amount of anaerobic metabolism is more yet in event lasting the 30 minutes. Uh, the example in the last 5 or 10k running, it will be significant contribution perhaps from 10 to 20 percent of total ATP turnover. If you remember in the last years when uh, more marathon if arrived in the last part of competition, if mm, we have uh, five, six athletes. In the last two kilometers, we have a competition in a competition. Uh, after, uh, in uh, my talks of uh, coaching running, uh, we have an idea for uh, the different two world records in marathon. The great difference in the, in, are in the last two kilometers. And the athletes we have the capacity we increase the contribution of a glycolytic of anaerobic anaerobic process in the last part of competition won the competition in the marathon now uh, in Chicago for example we need the photo finish for uh, distinguished the first to the second in marathon not not 100 meters the photo finish in the Chicago Marathon because the athletes last kilometer run in two minutes and 40 seconds, meter by meter, a very great battle and arrive on the line and similarly the, uh, the sprinter in 100 meter. Another problem in uh, endurance uh, performance uh, as most important, the name the efficiency. Efficiency are oxygen consumption to generate a certain speed or mechanical power. It, the, 
air conditioning, but VO2 max, a uh, lactate tracer interact to determine the performance VO2. Efficiency interact with the performance VO2 to establish the speed or power that can be generated at this oxygen consumption. In this graph, an important contribution in uh, exercise performance velocity has been termed economy or efficiency. A better economy or efficiency, as shown in the chart, allow athletes to run at a given speed of a lower consumption of oxygen. Uh, it's very easy to distinguish the difference from high average and low athlete with consumption of oxygen. The contribution in the endurance exercise performance velocity has been determined in economy and that's important in running and in race working are one of the most important uh, factors would determine the success. And in this case, not that only the physiological approach. Sport scientists would add the coaches. I am a coach. My uh, role at the university are teaching in uh, training and uh, in method methodology training. I live in the track every day for uh, I start to the coaching process in uh, uh, 1979 and uh, 34 years, uh, this year is uh, 35 years we, uh, I am uh, a coach and uh, every day, okay, that's good. Uh, sports scientist told me, uh, I think the most important to increase the efficiency, but the contribution of coach are fundamentally because the good technical, the, the good technique of running or race working uh, are one of the factors we contribution the efficiency, are not only a physiological approach. The physiological approach are the consequently in uh, on the track. Here in Australia, we have a good, good, uh, a very good uh, institute of sport, very good for scientists. In my experience, the uh, papers of Philo Saunders, Dave Martin, and the other, uh, Sean Olson, uh, Louis Borg, the other colleague of Australian Institute of Sport, helped me to increase the performance in Italy for marathon and race working. And uh, I think I encourage, I, mm, if I mm, train, if I coach in, in Australia, <coughs> every day I go to Australian Institute of Sport to discuss with the sport scientists because it helped me in uh, coaching process. Uh, during, uh, in, uh, in the last 20 years, in uh, every occasion, race uh, working uh, World Cup uh, during the Olympic Games, I observed an uh, example in 2008 in Beijing, uh, for me, the contribution of sports scientists, the, the two medals of general talent are fundamental because after the training, he uh, arrived the shuttle in the Olympic Village, uh, okay, Jared, we go to the building for dedicate to the recovery. It's very, very important. Maintain the concentration only all the time dedicated to increase the recovery from the two competition. In Italy are not the similar situation. In Italy are uh, the artisanal approach to the sports scientists. And uh, for me now, it's in, impossible uh, to ignore the contribution for sports scientists, practical sports scientists, in practical application, not only for papers in literature, uh, etc., but the contribution uh, of Philo Saunders and the other uh, sports scientists regarding their performance, and uh, that are uh, most, most important.
Another example, uh, this study, <coughs> Foster and Lucia, we uh, show data around 16 kilometer velocity by hour, the different consumption of oxygen, the different <coughs> running economy from uh, athletes, East African uh, runners are better running economy than European athletes. It's not the VO2 max, the great difference from Kenyan to the other athletes of the rest of the world. Kenyan athletes are normally VO2 max, 70, 75, 78. Don't tell 95. But your approach, take it easy for the running, a very good uh, technique of running, a very good economic running. And that are one of the great difference at the different velocity. Uh, 16 uh, km by hour is a, a low intensity, but the difference at 20k are more increased from East African and European athletes. A running economy are affected, are influenced by number of factors uh, affect the energy conversion resulting from the hydrolysis of ATP in running speed to running economy. Among these factors, we can include the morphology of the muscle, the elastic element, and the joint mechanics. The running economy can be improved with high-intensity interval training, plyometric uh, strength training, altitude, and heat exposure. Example, in, uh, if you have a good uh, running technique, if you use the elastic elements present in the muscle. But if you control only the volume of training and not the modality, the uh, technique of running, you don't use the possibility of mechanical power of the athlete, mechanical energy, not bioenergetics, not biochemic energy. If you control the running technique of East African athletes, you observe the natural rebound. And uh, in this phase of running, the mm, ability of East African running runners are if used mechanical energy, natural present in every men or woman of all of the part of the world, but we require many attention from coaches every day during the uh, training. I summarize before to arrive at the second part of this exposition are uh, the major variable related to VO2 max and the maximal velocity that can be maintained in distance rate are earth rate max and stroke volume. Here's the cardiac output max, remember, related to the age, the hormonal and nervous factor. Cardiac output and arteriovenous difference of oxygen given the maximum oxygen consumption capillary density and the amount of oxidative enzyme in mitochondria determine the percentage of VO2 max at which occur the start of accumulation of blood lactate. Also, last but not least, running economy plays an important role. This free factor determine the velocity of uh, the lactate threshold the velocity that can be sustained without significant accumulation of blood lactate, and so the maximum velocity in the distant race.
Okay, the second part uh, important for me to know the evolution of training through the age in the from um, 1900 to 1912 before the first world global uh, conflict in uh, uh, Scandinavian area they, uh, there are the first example Anes Kolemainen are the best athletes in from uh, uh, for 10 years in uh, 10k and realize it don't exist the coach don't exist the train on the uh, training theory but the athletes uh, realize an important approach 10 repetition 5 10 repetition for uh, 1k around uh, 3 minutes 0 5 around the race pace is the first example uh, of uh, uh, training methods. Uh, we train it twice, uh, train you twice a day. Uh, the, the volume are not more greeting. The, uh, only the report, uh, uh, only the note, they have 90, 100 K for weeks. And uh, you realize in uh, 1900, 30 minutes and uh, 20 seconds are the record world record in 10k now uh, they have many many women who realized this performance in uh, one <coughs> say, uh, 100 years as most changes but example in uh, uh, 1924 Archibald Hill uh, product the theory of VO2 max in the great athletes, Paavo Normi, who won nine gold medals in three different uh, Olympic uh, Games edition. Uh, Paavo Normi uh, realized that the first one uh, in the history of training method, example, a repetition uh, of now we named the interval training, six time repetition 400 meter in 60 second 60 second corresponding for 24 k by hour the race of uh, uh, Babo Nurmi is around the, uh, 3 minutes by kilometer for 10 kilometer 30 minutes are the time in uh, 1920 to 1928 for one to the 10k. Uh, your intuition are I train more more uh, 110 percent of her VO2 max. But the question are what are changes VO2 max or training methods? The VO2 max of Pavo Nurmi are 78 milliliter by minute uh, pro kilo. The VO2 max of Ken and Isa Bekele are less, 75, but are one consideration. If you have a movie and the same competition, Pavo Nurmi uh, concluding your uh, effort of around 30 minutes. Now the world record are 26 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, can Elisa Bekele with a VO2 max less Pavo Nurmi arrive four laps Pavo Nurmi? The question regarding what are changes in training methodology? It's important, another intuition of Pavo Nurmi is a solitary man. Uh, it's incredible his history uh, in uh, uh, 1952. Uh, are the Olympic Games in Helsinki. We have, for the first one, uh, we dedicate a monument of Pavo Nurmi, the President of the Republic, the President of Olympic Committee. After we uh, leave uh, this monument, Pavo Nurmi 
nothing worked, nothing one word observe and return uh, uh, return in your house because uh, it's a very uh, timid uh, very character your your son uh, write a book or your father and uh, it's very curious in her life uh, more more less words from Pavo to her son and uh, Pavo Nurmi every day running one hour, two hour in the forest, and uh, later Gosta Olmer studied the training of Paavo Nurmi, introducing the uh, Fartlek training. Fartlek training are a play, spontaneous play of uh, velocity, and have a, an interest, physiological point of view, but are the men in the track we arrived before the explication of physiologists. During the first leg, we have the oxidation of earth rate, and you increase the ability to recover it during the effort. But remember, for the young, you have strictly necessary the define the time of variation and the time of recovery. For the athletes of top level uh, athletes are different because we have intensity very high intensity and the recovery are not many less intensity the secret of king and success are emphasize these methods but also in Kenya they have also the Fartlek realized in undulate on hill, not in the plat, not in uh, track. And that increase also the neuromuscular factors. The first example for realized collaboration from scientists to uh, coaches are the interval training from Friburgo in Germany. Uh, Gerschler are a physiologist, Reindel are a coach. We study one method, uh, study the Swedish uh, training, study a Pavonurmi training and realize this intuition. Uh, you realize the effort, the repetition, uh, we can solicit the maximum earth rate 180 but the condition are we return a 120 in 90 seconds uh, now it's a, a modality is tremendous changes because don't have a competition if you have 118 and in the last uh, in in another lap 120 when you have 120 you have finished the competition and uh, but in uh, this uh, era uh, important this intuition because changes example the world record in 1800 meter from 1 minute 48 seconds and 5 to one minute 46 and six is very diffusing and depending to the length of the effort, the chosen speed, the duration and the modality of recovery, the number of repetition. In the, in the material that we have sent to uh, Simon and Kylie, I forgot uh, this best athlete, it's a very famous in Australia and uh, you inspire Ron Clark, the great champion, great hero of the history of uh, 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 long distance in Australia. Emil Zatopek, uh, he named horseman, is the only athlete he won in the same Olympic Games in 
95 to 5K, 10K and marathon, you realize in only one session, attention, 100 repetition of for 400 meters, 100, uh, and the recovery, 200 meters, the time. Uh, the time of uh, repetition, 72 seconds, equal 20k for hour. The uh, recovery, 200 uh, meter jogging, uh, around 14, uh, 15 kilometer, around uh, 5 to or 48 seconds in only one session, 60 kilometer in only one session. You emphasize the interval training methods. Uh, you are one of the best athletes for me in the history of endurance. And uh, you, uh, in Europe, they have uh, the, the one uh, uh, book describe the, the life of Zatopek, uh, one of the curiosity, during the winter, you run in the uh, terrible condition with the booth, the military booth. And uh, as a question, why? Because I realized super fatigue. And after, when I uh, go to the track, for me, it, are no scientific approach, but for me it's are important because uh, Emil have a great intuition. Are not only the earth beat, the VO2 max, but also the contribution of neuromuscular factors. Another. Uh, Another great history are uh, the first men we are capable to run under four minutes in the mine. Uh, Bannister, after the, this record, uh, the family pressure for you study in medicine. You are a good doctor, good physiologist. In uh, one conference in 2001, uh, the a scientific academic in New York, you uh, declare it's the brain is not the art, the limit of uh, the per endurance performance. You realize one approach to the training, uh, uh, training only one session for five days every week, but every section all out. Every section you arrive uh, at the limit of your possibility and they run, example, 10 uh, for 400 meters during the winter in 66 seconds in December, and the same session, 61 seconds in April. You realize a simple approach to the training. You are the, the data of December and April. December, 66. April 61. That are the progressive of intensity training. And uh, another coach with contribution uh, of evolution of training, now the name of intermit high intermittent intensity training, the father of this modality are the coach Mi Mihaili Igloy. You watch in the same section 22 kilometers divided and curiously formed from the first 10 for 100 meter jogging and warm up four series for four repetition 400 meter in 64 seconds with each four rep last one in 60 200 meter jog between reps and uh, 400 meter jog between sex and uh, after during the recovery from two series, from the series, one uh, one thousand and two hundred meter jog. After 
14 repetition in uh, 200 meter and the curious are uh, 175 I don't say but uh, it's a choice of this coach uh, from 95 to 96 in Europe, uh, the Hungarian athletes had a great history in the uh, middle distance. But arrived in uh, at the 16th, the very curiosity in the laboratory in Sweden, Peter Olof Ostrand is a great physiology with Christensen, your PhD student study the short interval training method in New Zealand Lydia realized on the track the same the same uh, training but don't have internet in 1960 uh, zero are very curious at the same moment the physiologist in the laboratory and the coach Lydia in the, on the track realize another progressive on the training method, short interval uh, training method, because if you realize uh, the repetition of 15 seconds at the 100% of your two max, and uh, you recovery the same time at the 50, 16% of your two max, the blood lactate uh, not increase but remain around two four four millimole and you have the possibility to subs so to sustain the intensity of your two max for 20 minutes at this modality and another intuition of uh, Lydia the theory of marathon training uh, the repetition of uh, running on the hill for the first time you are coaching your athletes on the sand now uh, the training on the sand are uh, because diffusion on the soccer in Europe for example but not uh, in the running uh, when arrive the best athletes of Lydia won important gold medal in Rome, in Tokyo, uh, you start the tradition of uh, the New Zealand in uh, endurance performance. Uh, around uh, the, the, at the end of the 60 years arrived the Kenyan phenomenon. The Kip Kano at uh, the Olympic Games in Mexico uh, won the 1500 uh, meters uh, gold medal and uh, a silver medal in uh, 3000 steeple chase. Uh, the Kenyan athletes won the 5000, 10,000, and the uh, Ethiopian athlete won the marathon. But uh, the problem are the difference of in uh, altitude. Mexico City are 2,200 meters. The winner of uh, 10,000 meters have in sea level 28 minutes. Ron Clark, you know very well, have the world record in 10,000, uh, 10, 27 and 40 seconds. The Kenyan realized in Mexico 29th minute, Ron Clark around 30 minutes. The difference from these athletes we live normally in altitude and the other athletes we live in sea level in performance in altitude are great. And the, the first uh, apparition phenomena of Kenyan athletes and after we have the era of the lactate threshold in uh, 1976 mother a uh, sports scientist German sports scientist uh, hypothesis the, the theory of lactate lactate corresponding at the intensity will accumulate uh, 
uh, constantly four millimolar liter for uh, lactate in the blood. Uh, because are important for coaches, because lactate thresholds are 1.2 refer and manipulate the intensity, the different intensity of training. And uh, in I have a, a lucky man because uh, these athletes, Saida Awita, realize that, that in uh, only one session, this training, one for 3,000, seven minutes and 40 seconds, eight minutes recovery, 2,000, five minutes, zero, two seconds. And the last eight, uh, eight minutes of recovery last 1,000, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds in the same session. Near all the free repetition are near a 95% of the world record. That are the, the first men we are. Uh, we running under the 15 minutes in 5,000 meters. But uh, remember the very good athletes I discussed before this uh, uh, with uh, Simon, Ko, Kram, and Ovet are the legend we dominate for 10 years the middle distance in the world, 800 and uh, 1500 meters. They, they have uh, also in uh, that area, uh, the Kenyan and African uh, uh, runners, but Ko, Kram and Ovet are capable to won in every competition, Olympics, European Games, World Cup, don't exist the World Championship because the start of World Championship is 1983 in Helsinki. And uh, uh, the very curious are the different methods uh, for arrive at the same performance. Sebastian Coe realized, example, on the same uh, session, two series of 10 repetitions for 300 meters in 39 seconds and uh, 100 meter easy recovery, 70, 18 seconds. If you calculate, we realize every lap, 5, 7, 5, 8. And he realized four kilometer uh, under the three minutes by kilometer. It's ironic power. Co use main of Ceruti principle, including hip, heels, uh, fartek, waist, plyometric, and circuit. I read the book of the father of uh, Sebastian. Uh, he, one of the first athletes we use our weight for increase your capacity of performance. But remember the. the Specific training arrive after 70 years, not before. And uh, that are uh, the area now. Aida uh, Gebrezilassie trained twice a day, altitude running about 105, 200 kilometers in winter. Example, five repetition of 2,000 uh, in 64 or 60 seconds elapsed, close to the 10,000 uh, 10, pace. 8 or 10, um, 1,000 in 2 minutes, 28 seconds, with 3 minutes rest. Free repetition of 2,000 at 505, with 3 minutes rest. But the mule are regularly undertaken plyometric section 
train with light weights with a high number of repetition. Regularly, those tries after training session, we realize that rebound controlled, and uh, that example, Saunders, Philo Saunders, in 2004 published one paper we emphasize the role of plyometric training will gain economy and efficiency. Okay, I finish. And first presentation. Thank you for your attention and